Good morning. <laughs> Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often, sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've got questions about ingredients, formulations, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also check out benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Peter, that, if you're listening, buddy, that is an awesome, awesome site, benfuchsarchives.com. Really appreciate you doing that. Uh, you can also, of course, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, or you can call 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, check out truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel. Yes, 5% gel made with vitamin C. You're not going to see that anywhere, folks. You're not going to see 5% anywhere, and you're not going to see retinol with mega high doses of vitamin C anywhere, not to mention no preservatives, no fragrances, no oil, no silicon, no wax, no nothing that your skin doesn't use or doesn't need. All the truth treatment products are formulated, formulated that way, and that's the truth. That's why I call it the truth. Why should you have to pay for wax and silicon and oil, vegetable oil? By the way, the vegetable oil they use in skin health products, that ain't no food-grade oil. You can't eat that oil. That's a degraded form of oil. If you see vegetable oil or trans or hydrogenated vegetable oil in your skincare product, I'm telling you, folks, you're uh, potentially playing with fire, first of all. You're putting a rancid oil on top of your skin. But even aside from that, why would you pay for rancid oil? 10% of most skincare products, most moisturizing skincare products and many anti-aging skincare products, if they say vegetable oil, somewhat, or somewhere around 10% of, of that product is going to be a oxidized, cosmetic grade, degraded form of vegetable oil, and you shouldn't have to pay for that. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. Got so much to talk about with fats, inflammation, anti-inflammation. Last program, we are talking about veggies, particularly green leafy veggies which are some of nature's best sources of essential fatty acids, especially hard to find omega-3s. And the fat content is something that you, it's counterintuitive. If you just look at a, a, a blade of grass or a leaf of spinach, it certainly doesn't look fatty. But rest assured, it's loaded with good fats. It's one of nature's best sources, as I say, of, of omega-3 fats, these green leafy vegetables. It's also got carotenes and flavonoids, or phytonutrients, they call them, plant nutrients that are so important for skin health, for sun protection. Carotenes and flavonoids protect the leaf from the sun, and when we eat them, they protect our leaves from the sun. Our leaves are called skin cells. Our leaves are protected in the same fashion that the leaf on a, on a plant is protected, using flavonoids and carotenes that we get by eating them. This is why eating your sunscreens is so helpful. 
eating plants and veggies is like eating sunscreens. That's how nature designed us. That's how we're supposed to be protecting ourselves from the sun is from green leafy vegetables and other vegetables, other colored vegetables, not by slathering toxic sunscreens on and make no mistake about it. They're toxic with a capital T. I don't care what you heard from your dermatologist or anybody else. They're toxic with a capital T. On the other hand, flavonoids, carotenes, plant steroids, the fatty compounds and vegetables can be super helpful for skin health. Veggies are just ridiculously powerful foods, powerful, powerful foods. They don't look like much. They don't look substantial, but they are nature's most valuable, among nature's most valuable and important foods. I, I would make the case gram for gram. Well, I don't want to go there, but they're super duper powerful. Let's leave it at that. And I do think they should comprise the bulk of our calories, veggies, 50% or more of our calories should be veggie based, veggies, veggies, veggies. And you notice I said not, I didn't say fruits, fruits are not veggies, they're, they're distinct. Fruits are like ovaries for seeds or uteruses. They're a combination of an ovary and a uterus. They produce seeds, they store seeds, they nurture seeds. And they got lots of sugar to feed the seed. Yeah, there's some good stuff in fruit, absolutely. But there's lots of sugar. The peel is really where the good stuff is. Eat the peel. Throw out the fruit. Eat the peel. You'll be better off. On the other hand, veggies are the entire complex. The entire veggie complex is nutritive. Even the fiber, which is inert, is nutritive. Veggies are like little solar conversion devices. They produce solid matter from the sun. And that is pro probably... Uh, the, the single most incredible chemical reactions on, in the universe, not on earth, in the universe, in the known universe, the ability of a plant to turn the sun into physical matter is just, it's, there's no other way to say it, but magic. It is magic how that happens. And, you know, it's not magic in the sense that we don't understand it because, well, we actually, we don't understand it. We can, we can see things happening, but how exactly it happens, nobody knows how that happens. That's magic. Anyway, phytonutrients, carotenes, flavonoids, these are all tremendously valuable nutrients for land animals. In this way, there's a relationship, a really interesting relationship between the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. We're interrelated. We're connected. There's a circle. We depend on plants and plants depend on us. We depend on plants as a valuable source of nutrients, omega fats, carbohydrates, protein, carotenes, flavonoids, all of which the plant somehow manufactures from the sun. We depend on the, plants, uh, on the plant doing this. Even if animals don't eat plants, even if lions and tigers aren't, they're not plant eaters, they only eat meat, they're carnivores, but the animals that they're eating were eating plants. So somewhere along the, chain, along the food chain, it all starts off with plants, whether we're eating them directly or whether secondarily, like a, as a carnivore. Milk comes from plants. Animal flesh comes from plants. Eggs come from plants. All animal foods ultimately come from plants. But it goes both ways because animals ingest vegetation, secondarily or directly. And guess what? Manure... And what we excrete and don't use goes back into the earth, and then that feeds the plant. It's a big old circle, and that is pretty darn cool. Grass-fed animals protect, uh, uh, provide us with nutrients from the plant world. Animal, uh, animal, uh, uh, animals return the favor with manure and fertilizer, providing plants with nutrients that, that used to be part of them. And omega-3s are chief among these. And by the way... There's my favorite form of vegetation is ocean vegetation. I've said this yesterday. I was, was going to tell you about this, but I figured I'd talk about it today. Ocean vegetation, ocean grass. If grass is, if terrestrial grass, if earth grass is among nature's most powerful foods, ocean grass is exponentially more powerful than terrestrial grass. Ocean grass doesn't depend on the earth. It depends on the ocean. And man, you want to talk about the mother load of life force? That is the nucleus of it all, the ocean. And the things that grow in the ocean, they get the advantage of everything in the ocean. The earth is like barren compared to what's in the ocean in terms of nutritional value. Why do you think... If, you, if you're a scuba diver, or if you watch those you know, oceanography tele, uh, TV shows, why do you think that there's all that life in the ocean? The ocean is the nucleus of the life force on planet Earth, and that means the matrix that everything is in, within, 
has got to have something going on there, and it certainly does. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Our number is 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, if you have questions about nutrition or health or skin health or skin formulation, something you may have heard about or read about, we're here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we get to as many calls as possible. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us talk about or advertise on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or also benfuchsarchives.com. Order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking omega-3s, omega-6s, fats, the ocean. On my bucket list is definitely to go scuba diving. Oh my God, the life force that is in the ocean. The Danish author Isaac Dennison said, the cure for anything is salt water, sweat, tears, or the sea. And right he was. The ocean is packed, packed with electromagnetic energy and that electromagnetic energy is conducted via minerals yes minerals the uh, the uh, ocean the ocean water is like a highly charged electromagnetic battery that runs 70 percent of our planet and only crazy human beings are stupid enough to dump their trash in it even though the ocean is quite forgiving Seafood, by the way, is also very powerful. And unfortunately, we got to be careful with seafood these days. But seafood is an amazing source of nutrition, uh, easy to process nutrition, easy to process protein, omega-3 fats, and the aforementioned minerals, not to mention vitamins, B vitamins, uh, fatty vitamins, DEEK, just crazy, crazy valuable. Shrimp and uh, so-called bottom feeders, by the way. Lobster, yes, they're bottom feeders. I know that, but they're also perfect protein. They're pure protein. Oh, but they have cholesterol. So what? They're some of the most powerful, dense foods you could eat is lobster and crab and shrimp. But they're insects. Yes, they're insects. And by the way, we're going to be eating insects like cockroach, like uh, crickets, not cockroaches, hopefully, but crickets and... Uh, uh, they're already doing it in, in Mexico. You can get little scorpions and, and crustaceans, little uh, terrestrial crustaceans stuck in your lollipops and in your tequila. But, but I'm talking about cricket protein. Yes, in about five, or five years probably, you're going to be able to go to the health food store and get a big old bag of cricket protein. Insect protein is set to be the next big thing, by the way. Ocean insects, of course, are shrimp and lobster, so-called bottom feeders. But much like cricket protein is going to be the, the next big thing, or the next thing, I don't know how big it'll be, but the next thing in health food stores and for people who want a good source of protein, well, ocean crickets, if you will, ocean insects like lobster and shrimp are packed with protein the same way. They're awesome foods, plus omega-3 fats. They have a special kind of omega-3 fats. Seafood has a special kind of omega-3 fat called EPA and DHA. Icosopentanoic acid, docosohexanoic acid. We call them EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are key elements for brain health, key elements for the eyes, key elements for the central nervous system, key elements for a developing fetus, for a baby. Unbelievably important. And you're not going to find them if you're not eating sea, your, your seafood. Not, there's not very, algae has some. And that's uh, something that uh, food processors and nutritional supplement companies are working on is extracting these fats from algae. But it's been pretty difficult. Although I did, I, I, I'm starting to see algae oil, at least in terms of uh, availability to researchers, if not to the general public. But it's only a matter of time. Meantime, you've got to get your fish. You've got to eat fish and fish oil. And I know about mercury in the ocean. Yes, it's a problem. Toxins in the ocean are definitely a problem. But fish also has selenium in it. Fish is a good source of selenium, and for that matter, sulfur. 
and selenium and sulfur both have a protective effect against mercury. So it may not be all that bad. It, it, it's certainly not a good thing that we have mercury in the ocean, but it's still, in my opinion, not a reason to avoid fish. If you're pregnant, maybe you want to not eat it as much, but on the other hand, you get all these wonderful things for your baby, iodine too. Iodine's an ocean mineral. If you're not eating fish or you're not eating seafood or you're not eating algae and seaweed, which we'll talk about here in a minute, you're not going to, good chance you're not getting enough iodine. The goiter belt is located in this country, it's located where there's not a lot of, where people don't eat a lot of seafood. Goiter didn't really occur with people who, ate, who lived on the coastal part of, uh, of, the, of this country or other countries. It only occurred inland because iodine is readily available in seafood. DHA and EPA, by the way, are also great for your skin if you have inflammatory issues. DHA, EPA, omega-3s, these are anti-inflammatory. So for eczema, for psoriasis, I have seen the most dramatic improvements in eczema and psoriasis in three days and four days simply by supplementing with fish oil. Now, I'm not saying that you only want fish oil as an essential fatty acid. And I'm not saying you only want seafood. You do need the others. They're all important. Flax is important. ALA, remember, is the master omega-3, and that's only in flax and in seeds. So you need your seeds, you need your flax, but you also need your fish and your fish oil, especially if you're dealing with eczema or psoriasis or if you're pregnant. Or just, just, it's a good idea to make sure that you're doing the seafood as long as you're not, of course, a vegan. If you're a vegan, well, you can eat, well, you should be eating a lot of algae. Vegans should be eating lots of algae, lots of seaweed. And soon you'll be able to get uh, algae liquid as well. Now, I'm not saying that omega-3 deficiencies, by the way, cause any of these problems. I, they may, as far as I know, but uh, that's not the point. What I'm trying to say is omega-3s, DHA, EPA are must-haves if you're dealing with eczema and psoriasis. And now, where do you think uh, the fish are getting their omega-3s, by the way? Where do you think the DHA and EPA is coming from? Seaweed, plankton, algae. The fish eat the plankton, they eat the algae, they eat the seaweed, and... They make omega-3s. So as it turns out, not only is earthly grass, terrestrial grass, super duper powerful when it comes to nutrition, but so is ocean grass. And this is why this is my all time favorite nutrient dense food is ocean grass, algae, seaweed, seaweed salads. Seaweed is amazing. By the way, seaweed is amazing for your skin too. Topically, seaweed can have some beneficial effects on your skin. If you want to make your own skin mask, go to a skin treatment mask. Go to the health foods or go to the Asian market and buy, or the health food store for that matter, and buy nori. Uh, I guess they call them nori rolls or whatever the whatever the seaweed is. There's dozens of different kinds. They come in little sheets. Soak the sheet. Put it on your face. You can make a nice mask. Kind of, it might break up a little bit, but still. You get polysaccharides, moisture factors, not to mention the minerals like magnesium, for example. Green always means magnesium, by the way. So green seaweed, when you're seeing the green in seaweed, what you're seeing is magnesium, and magnesium is awesome for your, for your skin topically. It's not going to get inside necessarily, but on the very surface of the skin, it can act as a, as a skin softener. How interesting is it that the humblest little forms of life, these single-celled animals, these tiny little critters, invisible to the naked eye, plankton and algae, the things that grow on top of the ocean are the beginnings of all life. They're the beginning of the food chain and they are, as tiny as they are, they are among nature's most powerful food. There's a reason why these little seaweed entities, these little microbes, these little single cell seaweed critters are so powerful as nu nutrients. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin health questions, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about seaweed, the omega-3s, the ocean. There's a reason why life is so dense in the ocean. It's because the ocean is like a battery. It's a supercharged electromagnetic conducting matrix. It's pure energy, ocean water, seawater. It's amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. And all you got to do is witness the, the teemingness of the life force in the ocean, except for the part that we killed off, of course, the dead zones. 
seagrass and seaweed is especially powerful. Seagrass and seaweed are actually little tiny cells strung together. They're single cells. This is what makes them so important. Single cells are critically valuable because single cells have everything you need. They're a living cell. And when we eat them, they make our cells. All cells are pretty much the same, you know? From a cell perspective, the cells that make up a bacteria are not all that much different from the cells that make up an animal. The cells that make up a fungus are not all that much different from the cells that make up a, a person. The cells that make up a seaweed are all, not all that much different from the cells that make up terrestrial life forms like us. And so when we eat cells, whether they're in the form of algae or nature's bounty uh, terrestrial cell, which we call an egg, an egg is an egg cell. When we eat an egg or an egg cell, or when we eat seaweed or algae cells, or when we eat nutritional yeast or yeast cells, we get complete nutrition. This is what makes algae so valuable. You can use algae as a nutritional supplement. In fact, you can buy algae as a nutritional supplement or versions of algae, chlorella, is another one that you can buy, spirulina. These are single cell organisms and because they're single cells, they're complete cells, they have everything we need. Most of the food we eat is not cells, is not single cells. Vegetables can be, but once you process foods, they don't, they're not cells anymore. But when you eat an egg, as long as you don't process it too much, you don't fry it up too much, you're getting a complete cell. Same with a seaweed, as long as you don't process it too much. Eating a complete cell gives you everything you need and you can truly subsist from a nutritional standpoint on algae, on seaweed. That's pretty cool, you guys. This is a food that is delicious if it's done correctly. It has every single nutrient that you need, every single essential nutrient that you need, and it's cheap. It grows on the ocean. This is so amazing. This is truly nature's bounty. The nutritional value represented by the nutritional value of algae and seaweed. Single cell creatures, complete units, self-contained nutritional entities, if you will. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first phone call. Angela in Florida, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello. Hey, Angela, Hi. what's up? Hey, how are you, Pharmacist Ben? I'm doing good. What's going on in Florida? Good. I have a quick question about food allergies and food allergy testing. Okay. I'm doing my best to keep out certain things, um, especially sugar, but I just feel like I can't get my digestive system right, so I was okay. going to go through a specialist and get a testing done. Um, however, I'm not sure if that's the best route to take. Um, not in my opinion, it's not. It. Specialists are... Specialists exist for themselves. They don't exist for anybody else. There's nothing a specialist can do for you. And by the way, there's nothing a food allergy testing can do for you either. Because you don't know how, maybe you're reacting to something that your body's producing out of that food. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's not the food itself, but maybe it's something that's a processed byproduct of the food that your body's turning it into an allergen. That could be. Also, with food allergy testing, uh, the way they do it is they take, your, they take a specific food, a, sus a suspected food, and they put it in a Petri dish, and they see how it reacts in the Petri dish. You're not a Petri dish. You are a dynamic, multifaceted living being. You're not a Petri dish. It's not that simple. So people will find negatives with food that, they, that could be a problem or positives with foods that are not a problem. So I don't like allergy testing either. But... You can be your own allergy test, and it's a really fun thing to do. Check this out, Angela. Get, take a food and eat it all day and start off with your favorite, most delicious food, the food that you, can't, that you love the most, and eat it all day long. What do you, what's your favorite? Do you have a, one particular weakness, pizza or something, Angela? French fries. Uh, spend all day eating French fries. Go to all the different McDonald's and all the different fast food joints in your, in, you know, in your, in your city and, and sample all the fries. Spend the entire day de doing fries. If you, get, if you notice that you break out, if you notice that you got uh, some kind of weird digestive health issue, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. You know, but the point is, is that you spend all day eating your favorite food and see what happens. You be the allergy test. That's what I would do. Or you, don't, you don't even need to spend all day eating it. But just eat it. Indulge. Enjoy your fries. Watch what happens. But don't eat anything else. Just eat the fries. You follow me? 
And then the next okay. day, do your next food. And the next day, do your next food. Why would we go to somebody else to tell us what we're allergic to? Think about it. And I'm not picking on you, Angela. I'm not at all picking on you. This is what we all do. But what is the logic to go into somebody else to tell us what we're allergic to? When you think about it that way. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's helpful. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate your Thank call. You. Hope we helped you. All right. You know what I'm saying? Listen. A specialist is going to take your money. He doesn't have a problem doing that. But why would we go outside of ourselves to have somebody tell us what's going on in our bodies? Are we that disconnected from our, the way our body responds to food? Eat the fries, see what happens. Eat the ice cream, see what happens. I was teasing a little bit about spending the whole day eating fries because everybody, anybody would get sick if they ate fries all day. But uh, when we eat fries, it's not the fries we like. It's the sugar and the fat and the salt. And there's a clue there for you guys. Sugar and fat and salt. The combination is completely irresistible. And food processors know this good and well. And this is why every city, in every state, probably in every country, has pizza places and taco places and donut places and every other fried sugar, fat, and salt, fast food you can think of places on every block because these foods are cheap and they're addicting. We are addicted to them. And then you throw in the high tech uh, biochemistry, high tech uh, organic chemistry that gets thrown into foods to keep us permanently addicted. This is why we have a food problem. We're being manipulated. Our strings are being pulled by food processors, by cereal manufacturers, by cracker companies, by candy companies. These commercials and the marketing and the billboards and the sponsorships and the endorsements from Mars and Kellogg's and Nestle and uh, it really is unconscionable on some level. It, it really is hard to fathom how a CEO can live with themselves. But other than that, we're responsible too. You know, this is why understanding how the body's working, this is why understanding our body's responses to these things is so important. Otherwise, our strings are going to be pulled. Otherwise, we're just going to be puppets. And that's in, that really is infuriating. That should be, that should really tick us off. That's why I say, every time we drive by McDonald's, we should be giving them the finger, let alone going in there and purchasing that, the swill. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Skinny Robert, I believe. Is that you, Skinny Robert? <laughs> yes, I'm Skinny Robert. Skinny, skinny Robert. How much, what are we up to now? 40 pounds, oh, 50 pounds, 60 pounds? Oh, shoot, over 100 over a hundred. Oh my right, goodness. Right. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness. Oh yeah, my goodness. Are we another 50? Hey, are you doing super Saturday still in Colorado? I don't hear. Yeah. Yeah. When's the yes, next I one? Am. When is uh, the next one? 20th. 20th. Um, uh, next week. Next yeah, week. All right. Next oh, in week, Longmont. And then there's a, yeah. In Longmont, there's another oh. one 27th down in Colorado Springs. So now that's a little far, but I'll be, da- uh, maybe I'll come to Longmont next week. That, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be in Tom's place. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. What's going on today? <laughs> Hey, I ran into one of my buddies last night. Um, uh, he's just getting ready to start uh, Longevity products, but he's like, uh, he had two, three years ago, he had a heart attack. They put in two stints, had him on uh, Effient or something like that for a couple of years, and he's off that now with... Uh, I don't know what that is. He had kind a sti- of blood thinner. Oh, oh he's on, okay, he's on blood there. Yeah. Is he a diabetic? He on, and, well, he's got to be a diabetic, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure, but he's down to 175 pounds, so he's lost some weight. Good. However, um, he just started experiencing blood and blood clots in his urine. He's going in that's for, not good. for that. No, no not. that's not good. Does, so, now, I assume he doesn't have a urinary tract infection or anything like that? No, no, they took it. They they did test. They took him off with whatever antibiotics they had him on. They said, no, stop that. It's not an infection. How old is he? He's 62. All right, so kidney, more than likely kidney, but it could be the prostate too. Something uh-huh. along, something in that area, you know, right, something right. in the plumbing area, so to speak. But with the history, with his history of heart issues and, and weight issues, I'm, I'm more than likely kidney problems. So he's got to start to take care of his blood sugar issues. That's the most important right. thing with kidneys. Does he have kid, history of kidney stones or anything like that? I don't 
don't know. Okay. So yeah. kidney is where I'd be focusing. It could be the prostate too, but I would, my guess is the kidney. That means more water after all his meals. Dilute his okay. blood. That means zero tolerance for anything that spikes his blood sugar, plus the sweeties, uh, beyond okay. tangy tangerine. The Beyond Osteo. We don't talk about the Beyond Osteo for sugar, but it really is important for blood sugar, too. Magnesium is. So making sure he's doing the Beyond Osteo. You might want to throw in the Immortalium. Uh, fiber can help him, uh, especially with his meals. If he would grind up fiber, but even before his meals, grinding up fiber. Uh, or vegetable fiber, uh, veggie juices. In fact, his, the bulk of his calories should be coming from vegetable juices. And then he also wants to be filling up with fiber. If he falls off the wagon and eats a bunch of sugar, more fiber will help sop up that sugar or mop it up. And then also more water. Uh, and also a little bit more chromium vanadium. Sometimes that helps too. And I love alpha lipoic acid, by the way, for blood sugar issues. It's actually used as a drug in some parts of the world for blood sugar issues. You can get that at a health food store, 400 milligrams or so a day. It's a little pricey, but it's well wow. worth it in my opinion. Uh, that's another thing for him to do. I, I'm, I'm looking at a kidney issue. If it's a prostate issue, throw in some zinc and throw in some, you know, it wouldn't hurt for everybody to throw in some zinc. Uh, good fats, especially the omega-3 fats, selenium. Selenium is good for sugar too, by the way. Also, sulfur, MSM sulfur. These are all the strategies I would be using. Right, right, right. All right. Take sounds care, man. Good, good to talk yeah. to you. We'll see you next week. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you later. All right. All right, all right Robert. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. On in California. What's going on? On? Uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about puffy eyelids. Okay. I don't know if it came about after I had my stroke, but how does it come about? Circulation. How did I get rid of it? Circulation, my dear, on. And this is for everybody out there who's thinking of buying a product that tells you a topical product. And I see them all the time, and it just infuriates me. Just more scammery. You know, not. Uh, it's awful. Puffy eyes or circulation, it's a sign your blood's not moving correctly. And obviously, if you had a stroke, you can see you, you know, it's understandable. But for a company to say, here's a skin product for puffy eyes, it's just more rip off unconscionable unfairness anti-humanity evil it's not right puffy eyes are circulatory they're not topical and the only reason we fall for this chicanery is because we don't distinguish the skin from the stuff that's underneath the skin when we look at the skin we think it's one sheet we don't realize because it, it it's kind of counterintuitive it doesn't look like much is there but it's filled with plumbing microscopic plumbing can you imagine this on there's microscopic plumbing microscopic vessels microscopic circulation under your eyelid or, or not under within your eyelid you follow me uh-huh. and so the puffiness is a reflection of all these blood vessels that are leaking and of the blood that's not moving correctly through now it's in the eyelid uh, your puffy eyes i assume you mean you do you mean under the eye or you mean the lid or the whole under area the eye. Under, uh, under. under the eye it's the same idea you can almost see how there's like a little sinkhole underneath your eye can you see how your eye kind of sinks in underneath there where the bone is that's called your orbital bone where the eye sits and if you touch underneath there you can feel how it almost there's like a little pooling an area where stuff can pool and that's a sign the blood's not moving correctly now, there's lots of reasons for that. The first thing you want to do is move your blood, force it to move by oxygenation, by deep breathing, and by exercise, moving your body, getting on a rebounder. But as important is cleaning the blood. We've been, we spent the last few days talking about infl- inflammation in the blood. So making sure your blood stays clean. Number one, moving it through deep breathing and moving your body. Number two, making sure that you don't have anything getting into the blood that's causing that coagulation, that clottingness. And that coagulation and clottiness, of course, is a result of, can be a result of, leaky gut syndrome. So patching up the gut with the Fucoid Z, which also is a blood thinner, by the way, making sure that you're using uh, uh, coating nutrients that can help soothe the surface of the digestive tract, aloe and noni and bone soup and mushrooms, gummy, gelatinous kinds of substances, gelatin, that can help too. Uh, Bone soup is wonderful for all that. Your healthy star pack, of course, that goes without saying. Make sure you're using your omega-3 fats. Those have a blood thinning effect. And vitamin E, too, might help. Um, Vitamin E might improve circulation. 400 international units a day of vitamin E. But consider it a circulatory issue on. It makes perfect sense that what happened after your stroke, or you'd notice it after your stroke, it was probably the, the situation was set up for having puffy eyelids before you had your stroke, and that's probably what caused your stroke. Stroke being caused by circulatory problems as well. So sounds like you got circulation. 
circulatory issues on. I haven't seen you in a while, but I'm guessing you probably have issues. You may have issues with edema in your legs. Does that, do you have that as well? Yes, so, so, I do. Well, it's all, it's the same thing. Do you understand the logic here? Uh-huh. Things aren't moving correctly, and don't fall for those silly products that tell you you rub it on and your puffiness goes away. On, I got to motivate. I got a couple more calls I want to get to. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Good to talk to you, Sharon in Santa Cruz. Is this uh, is this my friend Sharon that I haven't talked to forever? <laughs> no, it must no. be a different Sharon. Different Sharon. Okay. Yeah, What's, that's a what? good name. That's a good name. You're right. Yeah. Nice strong name. I like that name, Sharon. Thank you. What's going on, Sharon in Santa Cruz? So- I was calling um, on behalf of my best friend and her mother-in-law, who has been dealing with um, leaky gut syndrome for several years now. Um, And I'd heard you speak about it a few weeks ago, um, but I can't find it in the archives, and specifically about um, bone soup and how that helps rebuild the connective tissue. Oh, my goodness. It's so amazing, bone soup. Con- eating connective tissue is the way we build connective tissue. It's pretty much as simple as that. When we eat connective tissue, the body absorbs those nutrients, and it can turn it into connective tissue. When we eat the building blocks of connective tissue, things like glucosamine and hyaluronic acid and chondroitin, these are the building blocks of connective tissue. Likewise, our body will uh, build connective tissue. Bone soup contains both of those things. Bone soup contains the connective tissue, and it contains connective tissue factors. We eat them. They go through our digestive system. They go into our blood, and then our blood not only uses them as raw materials, but this is the, one of the coolest things about the body. When the body sees little pieces of connective tissue, it means to the body that connective tissue is breaking down and it's time to rebuild. Little pieces of connective tissue, whether those little pieces are amino acids or whether they're glucosamine or hyaluronic acid, or polysaccharides, those little pieces signal growth to the body's connective tissue because the body perceives those little pieces as a sign that there's breakdown occurring. Does that make sense how I explain that, Sharon? Yes. It's, it tells the body, oh my God, we better start building because the connective tissue is starting to break down. Breakdown always proceeds building up in the body and if you could signal to the body through foods that there's a breakdown in the connective tissue it will initiate the production of new connective tissue that's the magic of bone soup among other things bone soup is also a source of uh, of easy to absorb protein so for folks who are dealing with uh, intestinal problems people in nursing homes if you're on a, a diet where you need to get concentrated amounts of nutrients with very little calories if it, it, there's so many reasons why bone soup is incredibly important and by the way Bone soup is set to become the next big thing. I'm predicting for this, predicting uh, uh, this for you guys. In the in coming years, maybe five or ten years, there's going to be bone soup for breakfast places instead of <laughs> coffee. It'll be bone soup for breakfast. You'll have all these little bone broth stores where they serve you bone soup for breakfast. And I hope that day can't come soon enough. And we got to make sure, of course, it's organic and, and clean birds. But anyway, got to go, Sharon. Thanks okay. for your call. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Take care. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That's all the time we have for today. So much good stuff to talk about i always forget to tell you things and that's just how it is in the world of health and the world of nutrition check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com if you want to join the brightside ben team head over to brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com have yourselves a spectacular beautiful day we'll talk to y'all later folks bye for now